This is episode 4 of season 2 of Diversity Stories, a podcast by Studium Generale Artes. Hi. Hi, Mel. Hi, Henrike. <laughs> we're back with yeah, we are. Uh, two items this time. Mm-hmm. And the first item is um, by Christoph Chizewski. That's how you say his name, I hope. Christoph Chizewski is the director and one of the founders of Borderland, a cultural center based in Seczny, Poland, the borderland of the European Union. The region has traditionally been culturally diverse, but there has also been ethnic division. With their art and cultural projects, Borderland raises awareness about lost cultures and lays foundation for a culture of solidarity. Christoph talks about the Borderlander and the question where you belong as a Borderlander. He talks about the beautiful concept of the empty room as a way to meet the other. Good to have a word which is common for us all. Yes, I, I think that I came from borderland to the borderland here, not crossing an estate border for to be within the borderlanders. And that word is of spe- specific meaning for me. You see, it's, in Polish it sounds pogranicze, which is like a land inhabited by different people together. So it's not about external borders you live inside, but it's about inner border, borders of the community, of living together, of different bridges you you should build or cross to gain this art of coexistence rather than to feel that you have external borders outside, or you're at the border of national state. So it's not about borderline, but it's all about borderland. And from that tradition which we develop in the past, to to be a citizen of the borderland, or to be the borderlander as a person, as your identity, what it means that you are not true Paul or Catholic or Jew, that you are just a mixture of different uh, cultures, nationalities, or so on. This was a question we had in mind when we established with my team at Borderland Center in a small town inhabited by different nationalities. And it was not easy because of the history of 20th century that you know, designs these deep borders between people, in fact. And that was time when in the same family, people should decide which national identity they choose. The brother chose Polish, the sister chose Lithuanian or Jewish. It was a as uh, it was a choice, somehow, because before all, all of it was so interwoven at the borderland that it was not like that your neighbor is of different nationality, of with different identity. It was inside your, your own persona, inside yourself that you have different voices, different traditions, different connections. Today, it is easy because of the science to discover it, yeah? You just do your DNA research and you discover what kind of a mixture you are, in fact. And it it don't belong to the identities, national, cultural, state, identities we have. Our DNA is much broader. Extremely broader. 
I discovered that I have connections to Africa, to Central Asia. How it happened? So the borderlander is rather a, a person who is embracing all these connections and belongings to your personality. And so it's, it's very difficult for him or her to find a home in our world. So when we came to this small town, there was a Polish culture house, there was a Lithuanian culture house, there was an old believers community, a very traditional, I call them our Amish people, which, uh, who are from Russian origin, you know, they came from Russia, there are Roma gypsies, there are Belarusians, and we established Borderland Center in the very center of the town, in a former Jewish quarter. The Jewish community vanished during the Holocaust. Who you are? The question was to us. If you are Polish, you have a Polish culture house. If you are Lithuanian, you have a Lithuanian culture house. What is all about borderlanders? You don't know who you are. You are a kind of relativist. What is your belonging? This was not a new name for the people there, the borderlander. But during the 20th century, it was very dangerous to say about yourself that I'm a borderlander. You paid a, a price for that. You are a traitor, because if you have a national conflict, war, and so on, the hero, who is a hero? Hero is a person who is killing the neighbor. When I work in former Yugoslavia, and we work in Mostar, you know, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we had meeting like we have here, and our young people who came with us from Birmingham, UK, and from Seine, from my town, they raised question to the people, to the Mostarians. Did you help each other during the war? It was just after the war. Nobody raised this question to them before. Of course they help each other. They were living in the same houses sometimes, tenements. But during the war, the division is very strict. And helping the other, you become the traitor sometimes. Yeah? At least you are not a hero. There are no monuments to the heroes who help each other during the war, across the borders. We have monuments for our heroes, find, fighting in our names, if ours, in our self-interest, the state interest, and so on and so on. So, to, to deal with borderland was slowly, step by step, you couldn't do it overnight. You couldn't do by one workshop, or by thousand projects. You just decide. I was an artist at that time, 1989, when I was a part of an avant-garde theater group, Garginice. When we decided with my friends that this is over, we are not anymore theater going from one festival to another one and doing one project after another one. That we are deciding to stay with the people. Now for almost 30 years. And to do work, art work, intellectual work, education work, at the ground. With, with all the context we inherited in, in that place to, to find a way, finally, after the time of building fortresses on the banks or, or on different sides, to build a home. For the borderlanders, to extend different kind of borders 
that we were inheriting. And I had a mentor, you know, an old man. He was an old believer. Diada, Diada Dioma, the father Dioma. And he was a carpenter. As, as his family was, you know, during centuries, they were building houses all the time. And once I, I've asked him, what is, a, what, is, what is the mystery of good, to build a good house? And his answer was, you see, you should build the house in a way that the roof will not conceal the sky. For me, it was, from the beginning, it was very difficult to accept, you know, for me, the house was, you know, the roof, my intimate space. I can at least finally be at my space to have the roof open. What does it mean? He was, he was a believer, of course. So he probably one of the way he understood this was to have a connection with something that is bigger than you, yes? And not to limit your house, your space, to yourself. That there is something, always something bigger. And if the house will be something which is cutting you off, the, the entire environment, this is not good. So you think about the house as a space with a connection, open roof to other spaces, to other realities. But there was something else in that. And once it was the time I was working on the Kazakhstan-Kyrgyzstan border in the Central Asia. And I've met a person, he was a shepherd during communist time, on the mountain. And for him, this mountain was a sacral space. And when only communists collapsed, he established a community around the mountain. And they started to be the believers of the mountain. And they started to live around the mountain, pray, and develop the whole community. My question to him was, because I saw on the tables in the houses around the mountain that they have Koran on the table. So I thought, and that was my question to this man, probably you are Muslims. And he said, you see, this is our way to pray. This is our tradition to pray. But our true belief is that all our, our effort in life is to make an empty room inside yourself. That the only way to meet a God or only way to meet somebody else or only way to meet the other is to have an empty room inside you. When everything will be possessed, in yourself, there will be no room to encounter the other. You see, the way how people in traditional way, like old believers, build the house is like that. That even there is a small space, it's not big houses. Many people inside, many children. Yeah? Sometimes there are three children in one bed, but always, in the house, there is something they call Chesta Izba, the clean room. Unpossessed. Nobody is living there. So the, you can say it's strange. We need a space. We have kids and so on, children. Why you keep this empty space inside your house for the guests? for the others, maybe somebody will knock to the door and ask for hospitality. You should keep this space empty. Because if you will possess that space, the house will lose that its meaning, in fact. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you very much, Christoph Chizewski. That was Christoph Chizewski. And now we have another presentation for you by the International Student Circle. They are a newly launched project in Artes, and they are a platform or community for students to exchange information and expertise, to get to know each other and connect, and more importantly, to share creative possibilities for study and practice. And they do this uh, by organizing events and activities. And is the International Student Circle only open for foreign students? or No, no, they want to be uh, very open. So the, um, because they say being international is not necessarily being foreign. Uh, they want to include everyone who is interested to, um, to have international perspectives during their studies. This item is by Quinning Chen, and he studies media music in, in Enschede. Uh, originally, he's from China, and he has composed a song based on the concept of home. Today I will uh, uh, demonstrate my concept of uh, home uh, uh, by uh, present uh, by presenting a song of mine. And uh, uh, firstly, I will, uh, uh, as you all know, I'm from China, and China is a very big country. You can view very different landscape from the uh, west to the east. You can hear <coughs> you can hear different dialects from west to east, and uh, uh, for example, you can uh, watch very uh, beautiful, very uh, spectacular uh, plains in the west and uh, the grassland, and uh, you can uh, view uh, very modern cities such as Shanghai in the east, and you can in Naos you can go to skiing and uh, you can watch the sculptures of the ice and in the south you can uh, walk on the beach and even dive into the deep sea so it's a, a very big country and uh, i think uh, everybody outside is missing their homeland because uh, uh, our instinct uh, characteristics are mostly from uh, our hometown um, uh, we grew up in our hometown. We, spe uh, we speak the, uh, the dialects from our hometown, and we think the way of thinking from our hometown. So I I think that uh, it's not an exaggeration to say that each of us is a carrier of the culture from our hometown, and uh, I think. Uh, everybody is uh, in the yearning of uh, their hometown. Uh, the yearning is just uh, like a sound, a back, background sound in mind. Maybe sometimes you uh, won't pay attention to that because it's not very strong, but uh, we always know that it's always there. And uh, uh, just uh, as time goes by, the uh, feeling for our hometown will uh, accumulate. And uh, I think this part, it can be uh, uh, demonstrated in uh, my song, in the main, main song part. And uh, let's play that. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you. But I want to make a point that I don't, I can't tolerate with this. It's very vague, and uh, <laughs> yeah, this makes my sound very abstract. I think, yeah. And uh, as you can hear, if there is accumulation, there would be a, a, a donation. Uh, sorry, there will be a release, and uh, uh, your uh, as I said, the feeling of yearning of your hometown. It's just like a background uh, in your mind. But when uh, something can trigger the release, uh, it can be uh, you, uh, when you, uh, in a foreign country, you suddenly meet some, someone from your uh, hometown, and you can share your experience uh, in the same language, and uh, uh, that would be excited. And uh, it also can be you uh, suddenly uh, hear a sound uh, that you uh, always listen when you uh, were a child, and uh, that can trigger your memory. And uh, it also can be uh, uh, sometimes you uh, have some food, and you think the taste is just like the food from your mother. And uh, uh, when this happens, you can't stop but you miss your parents. So I think uh, uh, there uh, is always a connection between us and our hometown. So we need to always remember it. And uh, if we have free time, we need to go back and visit it. Thank you very much. That was Quinin Chen with his beautiful song about home. And this was Diversity Stories, a podcast by Studium Generale Artes. Edited by Fleur Bokhoven and Dennis Schaans. Hosted by us, Mel and Henrike, and produced by Ondercast. Subscribe to Diversity Stories wherever you get your podcast. And if you want to help us, rate us in the podcast in iTunes. Thank you.